hi lovelies welcome back to another video so yes it's been a while and i'm going to be doing some apray gel tips with some alcohol ink marbling today and i realized i never gave you guys an update on the dupe version to the apray gel x system that i did have on and i found the footage so this is what i'm showing you guys here now my pinky finger on my right hand did lift because i hit it like so hard i even think i damaged my natural nails underneath but as far as the extensions of themselves they lasted this is three weeks old and I had absolutely no lifting. I did change my design maybe once, twice, three times. I lost count. So I just removed the gel polish on my thumb to show you guys there's absolutely no lifting. But what I noticed is after a while with wear and tear, the tips do start to crack. Like you guys see that line right there? They do start to crack and that's what causes it to come across at the free edge. I did go ahead and purchase the Apre Soft Gel Extensions in the full cover coffin, well long coffin and this is 500 in here. Now all 500 tips could not have hold in here so they did include a package with the extra tips and I'm going to be soaking my nails off and we're going to work this the exact same way we did the dupe version with the McCart nail tips. So I wanted to share with you guys the sanding bands that I absolutely love. It's by the McCart company and this is their nail art sanding bands. You get 80 grit, 150 grit and 240 grit. And I do love how they come individually packaged in these really nice plastic boxes. And you also get a barrel to put your sanding band on which is really cool and thoughtful of them because most times when you purchase sanding bands you don't get that and each one of these packages can be reused so you can just pull down that little lever there take out your sanding band and then just go ahead and close it back up so you don't need extra storage containers for these and i adore that these are some really good quality sanding bands however after like feeling on each one of them i realized that the zebra one which is the one in the white ones are a little bit more soft compared to the other two and i'm going to be showing you it on camera so you saw me squeeze the zebra one so now i'm going in with the 240 grit and i'm going to be squeezing it again for you guys so you can actually kind of see this one is really really nice and firm and I will use this one to remove the shine from the natural nail plate. I've been using it and it's been doing wonders. The 80 grit one, I rarely use to be honest with you guys. I prefer the 150 and the 240. But the 80 grit one, I would be using to remove gel polish. And as you guys can see, this one is not even as soft as the white one. So I thought it was just probably one that was probably defective but it seems like they are all really nice and soft and these are disposable they're one time use i dump them after every client so this set was sent to me by the mccart company this is their seven piece ceramic nail drill bit set and i actually really love this set i really do i love this cuticle bit like it is awesome you get a safety bit another cone bit and these two sharp edge one is coarse and the other one is fine and it also comes with this dust drill bit head i don't know what you call that one but it comes with it so i am going to start off with the cuticle clean drill bit and i'm going to be really gentle and this gets up all that dead cuticle like this is amazing yeah i think this is now my new favorite cuticle clean drill bit usually in the past with these ceramic drill bits they come really sharp and then after a while of constant use they dull out but these are like really soft and gentle but still work wonders when it comes to taking up all that dead cuticle and like any other drill bit, I am working with it parallel to my nail blades and I'm not putting any pressure on it at all. Like I'm barely touching my nail bed with this drill bit.
and now I'm going to be taking that 240 grit sanding band and I'm going to use it to remove the shine from my natural nail place now it may look as though I'm going in on my natural nails but I'm really not because this is so fine it's not going to do any damage to the nail plate once I hold my e-file the correct way so now my nails are prepped and ready to go I'm going to go in and I'm going to size my gel X nail tips and just like regular nail tips, you want to make sure that these fit from side walls to side wall. And the cuticle area on this one fits in with your natural cuticles. I do have to go in and adjust some of them. And I'll show you guys how I do that in a minute. I'm just going to go ahead and finish sizing out for all my nails. So after sizing my nail tips, I'm going to measure where my natural nail stops and underneath that tip, I'm going to go in with my ceramic drill bit. You can use a sanding band, a carbide drill bit, whichever one you prefer. And we're going to go ahead and remove the shine from that area only. You do also need to be very gentle and don't dig into the nail tips. It's just like a light buff underneath to make sure that that gel has something to hold to. So this is what it's supposed to look like. After doing that, I'm taking the same drill bit and I'm going to go in and just adjust the cuticle area. I did cleanse the nails with alcohol and now I'm going in with my primer. I do two coats of primer just as if I were doing acrylic. The only difference is I do allow them to dry completely before going in with my base coat, which is what I'm applying now. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop my hand in the light and cure it for 30 seconds. So now I'm going to be taking my gem gel and I'm going to apply just a thin layer to the natural nail plate and I'm going to go ahead and cure this for another 30 seconds. Underneath the tip I'm taking the same gel and I'm going to be applying a nice thin layer from where my nail stops all the way to the cuticle area of the tip. Passing my brush against the edge to release any excess onto the nail tip and then at a 45 degree angle I'm going to press that nail tip onto my nail make sure that gel covers the entire nail plate and then I'm going to go ahead and cure it now curing is a beep 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 <laughs> because I don't have my helper to help me this time he's at school so I had to do it on my own so this is just me trying to figure out how best I can work this light and I did leave the application in real time so you guys can actually see how fast it really does go by for me the most tedious part of this is getting the nails into the light without having an extra pair of hands and making sure that your nails stay nice and straight usually if i'm doing it on my clients i would ask them if it's okay for them to hold the light and i will just wait a few seconds and then i'll take it from them and position it right where i want it just to hold the nail in place so that i can get through the entire hand but when you're doing it on yourself it can be a real pain So I made it through, yes, all the nails are on, completed nice and straight, and I did go ahead and pop my hand into my regular light and cure it for a full 30 seconds. Now I'm just going to go ahead with my nail cutters and I'm going to cut the length of the tips to where I want it, and they really don't feel like the macaw tips, 
they really do feel really nice and strong now the only thing i would say with these uh after wearing them for a few days now they are very flexible compared to regular nail tips and if you're accustomed with acrylics like myself at first it will feel uncomfortable like i felt as though like the nails were bendy so much that i actually contacted the company to make sure that i did it right it turns out that everything was correct but that is how the nails are they're made to be flexible so that they are not prone to breakage so i did take my sanding band and i did go around the cuticle area to remove any excess gel that would have squeezed out and also just to make that cuticle area flatter so that when it grows out there's not a big line between the grow out and the extension i'm using my 100 grit mere secret hand file and i'm just going to redefine my nail shape and after I do that to all the nails, I'm going to remove all the dust. I'm going to cleanse these nails with some alcohol. And now I'm going in with my Madame Glam's base coat. And I'm going to apply this to all the nails. I'll show you guys what the extensions look like before I go in with my nail art design. So the nails don't look as clear as they did previously and that is because I had a design on top of it so I'm sort of changing it out now and I will insert a picture of that design I really wanted that clear nail tip look so now I'm going in with a design change and I'm starting off with this new gel polish by Azor Beauty I'm applying a really thin layer and I did cure it for 30 seconds and now I'm going in with the second coat only this time I'm not going to be coating the entire nail I'm going to go three quarter way up with the nude and now I'm going in with this gorgeous pink by Madame Glam and I'm going to do this at the tip of the nail now I didn't cure anything as yet because I'm going to be doing a pink and nude ombre so now taking my ombre brush with some isopropyl alcohol and I'm just going to be working my brush back and forth I did leave this part in real time so you guys can see how fast I actually move when it comes to doing my ombres and every time you do not see my brush on the screen which means I am wiping the product off before coming back in again I don't want to lie to you guys to create a gel ombre it does take time but for me I prefer to have more products on the nail than too little so that I don't have to go back in with a second coat so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be adding gel wherever I see it necessary whether it be pink or nude until I'm happy with the way that my fade look then I am going to take my finger remove all the excess gel so that that nail is nice and smooth and not too thick and I don't lose too much of my shape either and then I'm going to go ahead and cure it in the light and I did cure it for 60 seconds How stunning does this fade look though so all i'm going to do now is repeat the exact same thing on both my pinky finger and my index finger So now that my gel polish ombre is completed and I absolutely love how it turned out, I'm going in now with my no wipe gel top coat and into that wet gel top coat, I'm going to be placing some AB Swarovski crystals to the tip of the nail and to place my crystals, I am using my McCart dual ended rhinestone picker and I absolutely love it because it is pink. Yes, it has pink rhinestones inside, but it also has a white wax head 
and the wax does not transfer over onto my crystals and that was the issue that I was having with the last one that I was using so yes I am going to be adding this as well to my Amazon storefront now I'm going in with my Madame Glance Perfect White and I'm going to be applying two nice thin layers on both my middle finger and my ring finger making sure to go ahead and clean up the cuticle area and side walls if I get any product on the skin before popping my hand into the light and curing each layer for 30 seconds. After I do that, I am going to go over this with my Ugly Ducklings Matte Gel Top Coat and I'm going to go ahead and cure that again for another 30 seconds. On my ring finger, I want a French. Now, I wanted to leave it white at first, that is why I am doing this step. So I'm giving you guys both options here. Now, if you were going to do what I ended up doing, which is coating the tip in black, then you can just go ahead and do the marble over the entire nail. However, because at first I wanted this to stay in white, I went in with my liquid latex and I'm just going to draw out where I want my French to be and I'm going to allow that to dry so do you guys remember these beauties these are the alcohol inks that we made in a previous video and I would share that link in my description box below for those of you who are interested I'm going to use a 3d brush and some acetone and I'm going to create a marble on this entire nail now this is just going to act as a background for what I am going to draw on top of it so it doesn't really need to be that perfect and as usual I am literally doing the most but the reason why I like the acetone is that I can control where I want my veins to be and if you guys want a more in-depth tutorial as to how I actually create my marbles I would also link that video in my description box below so you guys have a whole chain of videos to watch after this one and you want to check out my description box because I have all the products that I use as well as my coupon codes listed down there as well including the link to my Amazon storefront I am going to be adding the sanding bands that I shared with you guys at the beginning of this video as well as the ceramic drill bit kit because I am really loving them and that cuticle bit is a must-have so when I'm happy with the way that my marble looks I'm going to take my cuticle nippers and I'm going to peel away the liquid latex now you can use a tweezer to do this as well or your finger whichever one you prefer but it does look stunning even in white so I am going to protect my marble by coating this nail with some base coat so on this nail we are going to be doing an abstract dream catcher and I am using my Ugly Ducklings detailer number no. 2 nail art brush as well as my favorite Brill Bird brush and go in black and the reason why I say abstract is because it's not a full dream catcher you're not going to get the feathers and all of that because I found the nail was too short and I didn't want it looking too clustered so you guys know how I do I leave my drawings in real time so it'll be easy for you guys to pick it up I'm going to allow you to watch this part because it's easier for me to show it to you than to explain it and I'll meet you guys right back This is what I was talking about when I said that I didn't know that I wanted it in black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace that V out. I did go ahead and outline the entire tip. Didn't like how that was looking. So I decided to fill it in with the black gel paint. So after curing that black, I am going in now with my gem gel and I'm going to be applying some Swarovski crystals. I am using the Fire Opal Flame Crystal and the wrong ones are Tangerine 7SS and 12SS. I 
did go ahead and flash cure that and now you see me here i'm applying my no wipe gel top coat and for the last time i'm going to go ahead and cure these nails for 30 seconds allow the gel to cool and then go right in with my cuticle oil i hope you guys enjoy this video if you did you know what to do give it a big thumbs up and i know this video was a bit long compared to what i usually post but lately i've been finding myself having to rush through my videos and i'm not really liking it so much i really want you guys to learn from it so if you enjoy these long videos go ahead and blow my comment section up with some pink sparkly heart emojis and i will definitely keep these videos coming for you guys don't forget if you're not yet subscribed on your way out click on that subscribe button and while you're there turn your post notifications on so that you don't miss out the next time your girl uploads a new video and go ahead and follow me on instagram it's at be glamorous nails and if you recreate this design definitely tag me in it i love seeing your recreations and i do share it on my insta stories that is it for me i want to say thank you so much for watching and until next time stay glamorous be safe and i'll see you soon